you know, Police State is not a movie I ever wanted to make because I never wanted the country to reach a point where it needed to be made. Dinesh, we want to thank you so much for coming in and joining us today. This is kind of a dream come true for both Mercedes and myself. I followed your work for years um, and we were able to actually watch Police State with a group of other people. And, uh, and we were able to not only see how we reacted to it, but a lot of other people have reacted to it. We're going to ask you some questions. And at the end of the video, we're going to tell you the one problem that we had with it. <laughs> it left not only a big hole in us, but also everybody that's seen the film, it seems to, they also asked the same question at the very end. You know, I, we're living in a time that is absolutely insane, Dinesh. Things are upside down and backwards. True is false and false is true. And every time you don't think it can get any crazier, it does. And as Americans, I think for too long, we've gotten lazy in taking the rights that our founders fought and died for, and we, we just lost our way. I feel like we are in trouble for the first time in 250 years since our founding, more trouble than we've ever been in before. And, uh, and so as Americans, we have unalienable God-given rights. Among those are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. But the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, adds quite a few more. Free speech, uh, the right of conscience. We can think what we want. There's no thought police out there. Religious freedom. Religious freedom is a big one. Um, we have the right to assemble and petition our government for grievances without the fear of reprisal or punishment. And boy, does your movie show, there's a lot of punishment when you kind of stick your head up and, and speak up today. And uh, of course, equal justice under the law for all of us. We see this every day. It seems like only one political party is being punished when the other ones are all protected. And so my question to you is, is the, the movie was absolutely fantastic. Um, but give us an idea, give us an example of what you would consider a police state. Um, and what are some of those defining characteristics of a police state? For me, a police state is the sort of exact opposite of the American founding. Uh, in the philosophy of the American founding, uh, government, centralized government is a danger, is a problem. Why? Because, they, because a powerful central government can trample on your rights. And it's important to know that for the American founders, it didn't make any difference if the centralized government was a government of one, a government of a few, or a government of a majority. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, the founders use the term tyranny of the majority, which means that even a majority of people can trample on the rights of the minority. That's why they didn't like democracy, right? <laughs> so a pure democracy, which licenses the majority to have its will with the minority is not what the founders wanted. And as you pointed out, the Bill of Rights is an attempt to enumerate a partial list, not a full list, but a partial list of basic rights which are not open to political negotiation, meaning 90% of people don't get to tell you what religion you can practice. 99% uh, of people don't get to trample on my free speech. So these rights are unalienable. They're supposed to be inviolable. So this is on the one end. This is the philosophy of the American founding. The, the philosophy of the police state is that there are no rights. Mm. Uh, we are the subjects of a, an all-powerful state. The state may be working directly against us, or it may be collaborating with private actors to suppress us. The first view is communism. The second view is fascism. They are two birds of the same coin. They are two forms of left-wing oppression. Uh, and uh, our system is probably a little closer to the fascist in the sense that when we look at censorship, when we look at political targeting, very often what's involved in this country is not just the government, but the media, in some respects, academia, nonprofit organizations, digital platforms. So this is the kind of the corporatist or fascist system that Mussolini was very enthusiastic about. When Mussolini used the word totalitarianism, he meant it as a positive. <laughs> he actually thought it was a really good thing that the government had total control of the society and of your life. So that's almost a working definition of a police state. Now, if you look at police states around the world and you identify their common characteristics, you see that most of them, if not all, are now creeping into the United States. Mass surveillance, mm -hmm. censorship, 
ideological indoctrination and propaganda in the schools. Okay. Um, police states tend to be one party states. They shut down the opposition. They try to lock up the candidate of the opposition party. Uh, they criminalize dissent. They undermine religious liberty. They have political prisoners. So, you know, go down that roster and ask which of those things is not present now in the United States. Well, all of it to one degree or another is. Wow. I really appreciate uh, that answer and how you put police state versus what the founders intended. I, opposite. I guess um, speaking of how you kind of mesh things, I think one of the things I loved about police state was that you it was a quilt. It was a tapestry. You took what I would consider unrelated current events, Hunter Biden, January 6th, um, COVID. immigration, COVID, North Korea. I classify these as separate stories. And I remember hearing little bits and pieces about all of them. What you did was you masterfully put them, painted a picture with all of these uh, colors and all of these brush strokes, I guess you could say. So I guess my question to you is at what point or what helped you to, to combine this? How did you think to, to put all of this together? A movie is a, a story. It's a narrative. And a story typically has uh, a question that frames it, a driving central question. And, and part of doing a good film is to get that central question right. So we started out with the idea, are we becoming a police state? And, mm -hmm. and I thought that it would be the right, right of center saying, yes, we are. Left of center going, oh, no, we're the land of the free. We're not becoming a police state. But interestingly, when you put the question to people on the left, you find that prominent people answer, well, yes, Dinesh, we are becoming a police state, but that's because of Donald Trump. Yeah, the, the, yeah. the Republicans who are trying to shut down our rights. They're trying to take control of the election process. They don't want people to vote. They are suppressing people's rights, whether it's the right to abortion or the trans rights. So they've got their own specter of a right wing police state being imposed on them. So then that occurred. It occurred to me, well, it's not so much a question of whether we're becoming a police state, but who's running this police state? Who's right? Is it coming from the left or is it coming from the right? So that then gives me the central question to structure the film. And I say that we can answer that question about whether it's coming from the left or the right by defining a police state, by looking at the origins of it, by looking at how it developed, by understanding the architecture of it, how it's put together, who's, what's the, how does it work? who's behind it, who's in charge. Once you know, once you answer those questions, it becomes obvious what the direction, uh, which, which side is sort of driving the police state. And so that's how the film is set up. I think you're right that the, the power of the film is it's an explanatory framework, not only for a wide bunch of events that occurred before the film was made, but even after. I mean, even if you look at the news today, the for example, the, the censorship of the manifesto of the trans shooter or new information from the House Oversight Committee about the magnitude of government involvement in censorship. You know, it's almost like you go down this list and you're like, police state over here, police state part two, police state part three. You know, I could put all this stuff into the film or I could have a sequel ready in like three months and I'd be chock <laughs> full of material. So that's the strength of the movie is it gives you a real way to understand how this came about and to take these events, like you say, they seem disparate, disconnected. People know a little bit over here, a little bit over there, but make it all make sense. I think the thing that scares me most is the way that government, big corporations, social media, all the powers, everybody that has the money seems to be working together, which is why I agree. I think it's closer to fascism than communism right now. Walmart is no longer going to carry your, your DVDs that uh, Amazon will not carry them. Uh, you talked about, I think it's called OFAC. Some, you, you guys had $100,000 you were sending to Salem. It was picked off by uh, OFAC, Office Foreign Asset Control. They grabbed your money. And this is somebody that's a government agency that is involved sanctioning other countries, narcotics trafficking, international terrorism. What the heck are they doing grabbing your money? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, you know, if you make a movie called Police State, one way, if you know you're on the right track, is you're not going to have total smooth sailing with the movie, right? Because if the country is becoming an emerging police state, they will do, the people in power, in government or outside of government, will do what they can to thwart you. And we've Sorry. had about 
eight different examples of this of varying significance. I mean, really, right after we put up our website, one of the guys who runs our website got an FBI agent visit at the door and leave a card just saying, please contact me immediately. Now, the guy was obviously a little petrified. And then, as you mentioned, we try to send a wire for advertising to Salem Media. It's picked up by a foreign, um, an, an agency that supposedly is dealing with corrupt transactions on the international level, drug trafficking, terrorism. We're like, what do we have to do with any of this? Normally, when they do this, they're just trying to harass you. They're not going to be able to keep your money, but they'll keep it for weeks. They'll keep it for months and they'll keep it when you need it. You need it for advertising for the movie. Guess what? You don't have the use of it. So this is the game that they play. But again, we were able to put some pressure on them, mainly by just having media outlets call them. Hey, why are you holding Dinesh's money? Uh, what's up with this? Please provide a rationale. Is he involved in international trafficking or terrorism? What's the scoop here? And then they don't answer. They don't reply. They don't call these media sources back. But then they quietly release the money. Oops. And I was talking to a federal prosecutor who's in the film. And he goes, it's actually very unusual that they did this. That Their department should not even be dealing with you. Number two. It's even more unusual for them to rapidly give you the money back because <laughs> they didn't want to have to give any explanations for why they took it in the first place. And then you say Walmart. I mean, look, we've, I've done so much business with my earlier films, with Amazon, with Walmart. Um, there's, there's not even an accusation that there's anything wrong with this film. No one's even done a fact check. No one's claimed that this is inaccurate. Nothing of the sort. This is not even a banned topic. It's not banned on Facebook. It's not banned on YouTube. So what is, again, what's the rationale for not letting a guy sell his movie? I'm clearly, I mean, some people would say I'm the second most successful filmmaker after Michael Moore, but certainly in the last five years, Michael Moore's done absolutely nothing. Nothing. I'm the leading political filmmaker in the country, and they won't let us sell our movies on Walmart or Amazon. So you have to go to the parallel economy. Mm. Well, I mean, go to policestatefilm.net, which is our website. You can stream the movie. You can order from Shopify or from Salem. And the tabs are right there. You know, you'll get the movie just as fast. It works just as well. So, but, you know, it's it's unfortunate we're going to have to resort to this parallel economy because apparently the normal economy doesn't really work for us anymore. Mm. Well, it was funny because one of my questions to you was going to be, you know, what consequences do you think you'll face? You put yourself in the crosshairs. And that's one of the things from our perspective as a YouTube channel. <laughs> we put ourselves I'm terrified. in the crosshairs. I'm so afraid to even touch these topics because of that reason. So what advice would you give, I guess, to us? And, and what kinds of things would anybody that, that pokes their head up, what can you expect? Well, I do think that um, we should all be building up alternative channels because you're living dangerously, right? There's a sort of Damocles over your head. You can try to conform. I do a daily podcast. It goes up uh, on, on Facebook and uh, I put up clips on YouTube. And so, and my wife, you know, is very much in the same uh, zone. She's the producer, Debbie. And so she'll tell me, she'll be like, oh, Dinesh, you know, should you really have been quoting from the manifesto of the trans shooter? And, <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's a news story. It's the uh, and um, so, we, so yes, I mean, we all, all of us putting out information in the public sphere are dealing with this. It, it really shows you the suffocating effect of censorship and the way it kind of spreads its smoky, ugly tentacles throughout the society. It's very damaging um, because ultimately it turns you into a censor, a self-censor. Exactly. And, and that is actually its objective, by the way. The objective of censorship is they know they can't have a rule for everything. So their view is let's bludgeon a few people and then everybody else will get the message. And, and this has now become a standard tactic of the left. It's what they use with the Christian baker. It's like, we can't stop everybody. <laughs> Um, we can't force everybody to bake a cake. So we'll grab this one guy. We'll flog him until he begs for mercy. And then everybody will get the picture that if I do the same thing, I may end up in the same boat. Mm. Exactly. And we, we've actually experienced a lot of that. We're an RV channel. Um, <laughs> yeah. we're, we sold our small carpentry business multi years ago, sold all our stuff, moved into an RV and traveled the country looking for freedom, independence and adventure. Yeah. And we found it. We started a YouTube channel. But then things started to fall apart. And I couldn't stand what I saw happening to our country. Um, and I'm the guy that God put in my heart. I can't keep my mouth shut, Dinesh. And I'm one of those guys that want to start brush fires of, of freedom in the minds of men. I pay attention 
to what goes on. And I knew every single individual story that you covered in this film. I knew them individually. What I did not know is the background. I didn't see the real lives. Most of the people, normal, ordinary, um, everyday Americans are having their lives destroyed. They put them in this invisible prison. They bankrupt them. And that movie not only had us crying, it had just about everybody that we've talked to and watched the movie in tears. Men and women. Men and women, moms and dads. Mark Houck. Um, you know, a dad of seven and what what the FBI did to his family and, and his children. Beverly Beatty Williams, God bless that woman. She's she's going with her heart and boy, are they punishing her. And then, of course, Matthew Perner. Mm. You know, I knew that story, Dinesh. Uh, and to listen to his aunt talk like that, we were all bawling our eyes out because God bless that young man. And, you know, you know how our system works. They force you to make a plea agreement. You have no choice because they tell you, if you make us go all the way to the end, we're gonna crucify you and we own the judges, mm -hmm. right? And so you kind of stuck. You know, yes, I mean, this is all, you're now talking the complete meat and potatoes of this movie because I, the way I thought about it was, if I made the film that focused just on Trump or even just on Trump and January 6th, I would inevitably get people who would say, well, I'm not Donald Trump, Dinesh, and I didn't go in the Capitol on January 6th or get into fights with the cops. And so I pay my taxes. And so I'm OK. I'm never going to be a target of the of the Biden regime or of the U.S. government. Yeah. And I wanted to show that, no, there are a lot of guys who are just going about their normal lives. They're involved to some degree in civic um, activity. There may be moms who care about what their kids are learning, or they may be someone who has a heart for the unborn. And so they're like, let me go to this clinic. Let me see if I can talk some women out of making that a, a terrible decision that they themselves will come to regret. And then suddenly they're facing like 15 years in prison, or there is massive FBI raid with dozens of agents, automatic weapons, all kinds of thuggery going on. And so in my mind, it raised a lot of questions. I mean, uh, number one, like what motivates the FBI guy to do that? I mean, you can't, they can't all be villains. So you, so part of the challenge of explaining a police state is what, how do you get decent people to do indecent things? Mm. How does the bureaucracy manage that? Uh, a second thing was, it, it occurs to me, and then this has occurred to me before, it's the power of film. And it's that, it's that if I tell you something, it's not the same as you seeing it. And this is just true of anything else. It doesn't even, if I were to tell you about India, I grew up in India and I'll tell you four or five things about it. And you're like, huh, but you still can't really get the feel of it. Now, if I, if I make a, a film and I show you, this is my house, this is where I grew up, this was my room and my parents were over here and this is a picture of them, you get a much fuller idea of what my life was like in India. So in the it. film, you not only can use authentic footage, and as you know, we used actual footage. We had the FBI, you know, uh, surveillance footage of them breaking into Joe Bolanos's apartment. Uh, in other cases, we we recreated things with great accuracy, and this is where it helped for us to have Kyle Serafin and Steve Friend consulting on the movie because they're FBI guys. They know the lingo. I, I told them, listen, at the end of a shot, I want people in the FBI or the DHS or the DOJ who see this film to say. That is exactly how that would have gone down. And so the film took a lot of care to creating, to recreating events with complete accuracy. I think it was the, your best film yet, absolutely. But yeah, well, the point I was trying to make is that these normal Americans, everyday people that just barely get by, have don't no have the resources that we have you know, to protect themselves. They bankrupt these people and God bless them, they still still do what's in their hearts and they're still trying to do the right thing. So mm -hmm. God bless me. God bless you for making the movie and sharing their story that will never get heard by the mainstream media. Well, let me just tell people that, you know, if you go to police state film.net, that's the one stop shop. It tells you different ways to stream the movie. It'll even have instructions. We're just putting those up now about how do you stream the movie to your TV? Because it's actually not hard to do, but some people are like, how do I stream it to my TV? Yeah. Well, it turns out you can get it on Rumble, you can get it on Salem, and you can stream it onto your TV, whatever device you prefer. Or if you want to go old school, order DVDs. Yeah. Uh, and there they are, you got tabs and some choices for how to do that. So yeah, I want to teach Walmart and Amazon a lesson. And the way you do it is you show that their effort to shut you down is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And so we tell people, listen, help us out. 
order the DVDs from the website. You'll get them in a day or two. And a great way to stock up on some Christmas presents. And I'm going to repeat police state film.net. The dot net is correct. correct. The dot net is correct. Um, because I think we vote more with our dollar in our everyday purchases. Do we go to McDonald's or do we go to a local mom and pop grocery store? Do we buy something on Amazon or do we go into a store? It's not in, in November every two years, every four years, it's really, really with our everyday choices. Mm -hmm. um, but that, I think that brings us to the, to the big, big question. Dinesh, we were sitting in a room with about 30 other people watching this and the, and, and the, the tears it, I think this is the best cinematic work you've ever done. I've, yes. I've never missed one of your movies and I actually love 2000 mules and huge questions about the last exact election. And it doesn't seem like much has been done to fix that and who knows what's coming in 2024, but we as citizens have got to get active and we got to know what to do. And when your movie ended, I mean, th th there was tears. tears. We were all singing the, the, the national the anthem. National anthem. Um, some were humming it and then you could hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. It was silent. And then two people spoke up and said, what do we do? Yeah, now what? You've it's convinced like, me. You convinced us. You win. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is a powerful, powerful movie. Everybody has to see it. I mean, the first thing you do is go see the movie and get other people to see it. Yeah. But what? What can we do as everyday Americans? How can we affect change? What can we do, Dinesh? Yeah, this is a good question. And first, let me explain why this question is not answered in the movie. It's not answered in the movie for the exact same reason that at the end of the Shawshank Redemption, you do not have, I repeat, you do not have a panel discussion of prison reform at Shawshank, right? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Good point. In other good words, point. to do that would actually be to deflate the film. Uh, the film is at its best in exposing a problem, a phenomenon. It's at its best in where it doesn't allow you to look away from the problem. Because to me, the big problem, the problem preceding the film, is that most of the country, and I would add most of the Republicans, are in the position of the, the, the antelopes or the wildebeests that are grazing lazily. And even though someone is shouting, there's a predator behind the trees, they're like, no, Dinesh, it's the wind. Or if there's a predator, he's not going to land on my back. So the job of the film is like to issue a red alert and say, look, I'm going to show you systematically that this is a very serious problem. It involves Trump, but it involves a lot more people. Political prisoners are now real in this country. Ordinary people are being bludgeoned and you can hear their own stories. So I'm not going to let you be that antelope. Now, once we're all in agreement that there is a cheetah or a lion behind the trees, now it's time to have a discussion, but not before. Because if, if you have it before, you have people in complete delusion and they, they don't have any grasp of their situation. And so their solutions are nonsensical because they, they, ha they are not taking stock of how far this police state has advanced in the past two years. Now, for people who do get it, and like you say, people have watched the film, they're like, what now? Mm -hmm. This is the time to open up a whole new discussion. And it's a discussion that is partly at the individual level, but we have to also realize police states are not just stopped by like ordinary guys who go out there and say, we're going to form, we're going to come with our pitchforks and create a barricade. <laughs> you need some of that, but you also need courts. You need the legislatures. So we need to motivate our elected leaders. Well, we need uh, attorneys general at the state level and, and secretaries of state. We need Republican governors to do more so that we need our institutions to do better. We need to be building up a parallel economy to thwart the kind of censorship economy. Uh, and then at the individual level, there are 10 things you can do. Hey, look, if you can run for school board, do that. If you can be a poll watcher or a poll observer in the 2024 election, do that. Mm. So there are practical things that you can do in which you're not solving the problem, but you are becoming part of the solution. It's so true, Dinesh, because it's a military grade propaganda. And I don't even blame half of the other side. They just have their heads in the sand. And there's just this cognitive dissonance where they really don't think anything's going on. But the, the military grade propaganda that has been working on all of us for so many years. I mean, I decades, decades in decades. I used to love the Bush family. I told my children, oh, that's the greatest president during, you know, the 9-11 the, the years and, 
And now you and, don't and like now it. I they dis, they discuss me. Most of the Republicans discuss me. It's one thing to be evil. It's another one to shut your mouth and watch evil happen, mm. which is what the the Republicans have been doing for too many years now. The the number of fearless voices out there is few and far between. And one of the reasons I teamed up with Bongino for this film is I thought, well, look, I need to find a guy who's got the background of having some knowledge of the police state, former NYPD officer, Secret Service agent, and also a kind of a fearless guy. So a good yep. guy to uh, bring on board because it's this is he's not the kind of guy where if we get some pushback or things start getting rough, he's going to be like running for the fences. No. So, and and so it's been a really good collaboration. I think we've we've pulled off a really good movie, and and a very necessary one. Yeah, I agree with you. I love I love I love Bangino. I, I Bongino, I love you. I think thank God there's some men out there that still have balls the size of elephants that aren't that aren't afraid. You know what I mean to go out there and say what needs to be said. And I want to tell you real quick. Twenty years ago in two thousand three, you were my assigned reading. What's so great <laughs> about America versus Zins, a people's history of the United States? I appreciate that, and and you can see how hard <laughs> it was for me to make a movie like this because I have been yeah. a rah rah defender of the American experiment and the American dream. Yeah, and so I made the point that you know, Police State is not a movie I ever wanted to make because I never wanted the country to reach a point where it needed to be made, but mm. uh, it is in some ways my most urgent movie. Well, with that, I just want to thank you. If there's anything in our limited power that we could do for you, you need help with an RV, <laughs> you need a place to stay in Northern <laughs> Alabama. Very nice of you guys. Uh, I'll take it up with my wife, but uh, I think that uh, you guys are helping me spread the word and I appreciate that. And once again, you know, policestatefilm.net is the place to go. Stream it. Um, get DVDs, stock up for Christmas. Um, uh, I, I think if you share this movie with other people, they'll have the experience that your friends did in the theater, which is they'll thank you for it. It's it's a movie that's a little, it's disturbing at some levels, mm -hmm. but I think it leaves you a little bit of a different person than you were before you got into the theater. Three hundred percent. Right. It was moving. Congratulations right. on the film and its obvious success. Did great at the box office. Hopefully, Mercedes and I want to help you sell as many as we can and yep. wake up as many people as we can yes. to what's going on because we don't win the next election and we're in big, big trouble. I think yeah. it could end. So thank God bless you. you. God bless Dan Bongino. God bless your family. And thank you so much for, for helping us and coming and visiting with us today. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.